So let's take a look at what the product can do for us. First of all, I'm going to log in, which will give me my access as a HR administrator who has access to pretty much all functionality. I'm going to show you in a minute how the access control um, governs what you can see when you log in based on the role that you play in the company. Uh, just as a quick orientation, you see on the left hand side my regular tasks, which are my favorites, basically the things that I want to have frequent access to. Here I have some uh, workflow uh, activities that are pending with me. The ones that are uh, overdue or the, the ones that are pending are in blue and in uh, red here it shows me how many of those activities are pending. These are basically uh, approvals that are required, for example, for requisitions or uh, messages that are coming through or uh, changes on employee profiles or resumes that employees have updated internally, which you may need to approve. And you also have a KPI uh, dashboard here where you can see KPIs that you want to monitor. And those you can uh, produce in different formats. You can look at this whichever way you want to and analyze the data as required. Here you can see some of the new hires that have been brought on um, this year. And here I have another KPI showing me employee count over the period. So basically you can uh, work this whichever way you want. Now let's go and look at the uh, more uh, in-depth functionality here. So regardless of the size of your business, you're going to need to create a foundation for HR before you can do payroll. Because in order for us to hire people and pay them, we need to have um, an, an HR infrastructure in place. We need to have a structure uh, primarily. So uh, th what's important is that you can set up any number of organization units. My example that I'm going to use here is administrative services. Now, this particular unit um, it could be a project in mining you'll have for your projects defined here and those projects could be broken down into multiple activities each project can have its own uh, working hours could be a 24 7 operation or could be a, a regular 9 to 5 whichever way you want to and if it's a project it could have a, a start date a planned end date and an actual end date okay now each uh, unit each of these organization units will have cost center information uh, associated with it, GL information. It'll have its own username and password. And as a result, you will have an org chart once we have uh, defined that org structure, which will show us how these uh, different reporting units um, report to each other. And you will see the, da the data also on uh, which employees are assigned to each unit. You will have performance and strategic goals for each unit. You can, you can monitor risk. Uh, the main thing to know here is that there are multiple reporting lines and you can define different reporting lines and produce your org charts based on these different reporting lines. So right now I have a reporting structure that's quite straightforward. I have the admin services reporting to the office of the CEO, but you could have done, could have done that any other way you wanted to. You could have had multiple reporting uh, going on here with dotted lines, for example, to the finance department from admin services to finance and there would be a um, time when this uh, reporting uh, relationship starts and, and a, the type of reporting and so on. Now, the first bit that we need, as I said, is the organization structure. Second part that we need is the employee groups or pay groups. We need to define different pay groups in the system so that we can set up policies based on those groups. And what you're looking at here is the ability for me to define any number of pay groups. I have an example here. I have Canadian and U.S. employees that are paid weekly. I have U.S. employees that are paid semi-monthly. I have South African employees. I have Mexican staff and so on. For each one of them, we will have a separate employee group or pay group. And I'll pick a different example here, which is admin staff. It could also be, if it's not based on country, if you operate only in one country, you will have a distinction based on whether or not, for example, these employees are salaried or hourly, or whether they are paid based on piecework, based on what it is that they produce. Okay, uh, Your weekends can be defined and can be specific to the particular pay group. So you could have one group that has weekends on Sundays and Saturdays, another one that only has Sundays, or whichever way you want to work. The payroll country can differ by pay group. 
which means that you can have a different group paid based on different com uh, country rules for each one of these pay groups. And there's a lot of settings which we won't get into in detail right now. Um, I will point out that if you had a, uh, a more complex operation where some countries or some pay groups are paid and managed in a different manner whereby the uh, financial data needs to go to another financial system, we have the ability to support that. Okay, you can obviously pay them in different currencies. You can pay one person in more than one currency. You can pay them in multiple bank accounts. Uh, you can choose your default timesheet that you're going to be using, whether you're going to get your time uh, records from your t uh, time clock or whether you're going to be importing a timesheet uh, from a CSV or Excel format. The pay calendar is 100% configurable. What that means is that you can create your own pay calendars and your pay periods so it could be monthly weekly semi-monthly uh, sem um, bi-weekly or it could be something else something completely user defined so we need to have an organization structure defined we need to have our pay groups defined so the system knows which policies will be applied and i'll come back to that in a minute but we also need to have a job uh, classification set up and this will be important if you're going to do reporting to the government and if you need to uh, provide all kinds of uh, labor statistics for your business. So it is important that you use the right classifications for all these different job titles. You may have some internal um, job titles and coding that you use, but you will also need to track the relevant data uh, for government reporting uh, purposes. So you have the ability to create job groups, classes, and categories, and then you will have the ability even to have additional classifications. I'm not showing you everything here in this particular screen. Now, there's a lot of data that you can capture on these jobs. The main thing that you need, uh, regardless, even if we're just doing the most basic payroll, you need to have a job code and a job title so that you can hire people with a title and you can pay them. But beyond that, you'll have the ability to track grades and steps You'll have the ability to define detailed job descriptions, education requirements for the job, skills and certifications needed in the job, experience you must have uh, for to hold the job, or interview questions that need to be asked of anyone who is taking, uh, who is being interviewed for this job, as well as training requirements, competencies required, risks, and so on. So everything associated with this job will be defined in the system. Now. Once we have set up this structure, we're going to go and set up your policies. So we need to know, for example, your leave or time off policies. And I'll uh, give you one example of that. Keep in mind, I'm showing you some, um, some uh, setup screens here basically right now. So for example, I have an annual leave policy. Uh, you can set up as many policies as you like. We will do that for you based on uh, your requirements. But what you can see here are uh, detailed uh, parameters that are associated with the definition of a particular time off or leave policy. You notice that we can define information about maximum leave carryover. We can define whether we're going to track leave based on number of working days or calendar days. We have the ability to, do, to choose the accrual method for, this, for a particular type of leave. And the, not just the f uh, frequency, but the method itself. Is it going to be a fixed number of days? Is it going to be a percentage of something? You can set up uh, leave policies that allow pay in lieu of leave so that the person can be paid if they did not take up that leave. Or it could be the reverse, which is leave in lieu of pay in return for uh, instead of overtime, you might be giving them uh, leave. So... There are a lot of settings here. The accrual rates are very flexible, can be li linked to seniority, or can be based on a uh, number of days that you've been working in this organization. There could be uh, leave uh, entitlements based on your grade. Everything is flexible and configurable. Okay, the grades in the system, again, are user-defined. Depends on the grading structure that you've defined in the system. So once we have defined your leave policies, we have defined your time rules. So let me just show you the most basic time and leave management setup, although there's much more to it. Here are some of the basics where I define, in my case, I have a work week, a standard work week that's Sunday through Thursday, or I could have obviously have it as Monday through Friday. The point is simply the flexibility. We have some rules about 
how do time uh, sheets need to be approved how to how do leave requests and leave returns need to be approved what are the standard rules about uh, work shifts what are the uh, attendance systems that we interface with are there any mandatory fields that need to be part of a leave request everything is available in my setup now beyond that I also have the uh, timesheet import format so we would go and set up our timesheet uh, import format and you will see that everything is configurable again so if we're not pulling it from a particular time clock then it will be a CSV or an Excel file and we will define what are uh, where do we find the data in the Excel file what is the format in which it comes so that the system can easily read it and um, uh, basically process it now apart from the time attendance rules and if I haven't gone into the ability let me do that right here for example to set up 24-7 uh, shift patterns and set up uh, sophisticated shift and shift uh, constraints now let me show you an example of a 24-7 shift pattern right here I have a shift pattern that's set that it's uh, called four on four off so people work four days and then they're four days off and during those four days they work 12 hour shifts so there's a day shift and a night shift in my case I have a shift pattern with four teams who work day shift and night shift alternating and so the system allows me to create any type of shift pattern there are more than uh, 60 shift patterns defined out of the box in the system that are predefined which are pretty much all the standard shift patterns that are out there but you can modify them and add anything else you want to it so each one of these shift patterns has a definition and, and details about how exactly this should work if I go to a, a detailed shift definition you will find that every shift will come with all the uh, required information that will allow us to schedule people so if I go and look at a day shift for example it's telling me here these are the normal uh, uh, parameters Th this is a fixed or a rotating shift it is a uh, shift that um, goes from Monday through Friday and then we can set up grace time we can set up the weekend we can set up shift constraints and we can also choose uh, what type of positions need to be filled in these shifts so that we have the right amount and right type of people on the shift at all times when we start scheduling people I won't get into more detail on this but the point is that there's a very sophisticated time attendance um, scheduling solution and also the ability to integrate this with time clocks obviously so we have our own time clocks which are which allow me to enroll fingerprints or time uh, or proximity cards record the time of the employees and read that automatically and then um, have it processed with approvals by supervisors through self-service and ultimately sent to payroll for processing now when we're setting up a system any client that we work with we always need the organization structure we need the uh, employee groups we need the job titles we'll need your time off policies your leave policies your time and attendance rules we also need your uh, compensation and payroll policies so your earnings your allowances your deductions your expenses your um, commissions and bonuses and so on all of those are defined as per your company needs so we'll go and take a look here's a list of earnings and you notice that all these earnings are applied to specific groups these are the employee groups that we have defined I'll give you an example I'll go to my allowances and you will find that allowances are defined here now you can have as many you can create as many as you like here if I go to a food allowance for example let's say you're paying somebody a food allowance either because of the job that they're in or maybe because of the location where they're doing the work from you notice here the currency like any policy in our system the currency is user defined this is a global um, payroll and HRMS so you can do whatever you want with that um, food allowance and pay that in any currency in any policy that we have whether it's an earning allowance commission bonus deduction doesn't matter can be done in any currency 
Now we can choose a lot of uh, parameters here too. I won't get into that. I just want to point out that everything in our system is effective dated. So there's an effective date and a stop date, which will affect whether or not a person needs to get paid that particular policy here. Um, you will choose the processing cycle. When do these things need to get paid? You will choose whether this is going to be a time dependent uh, calculation or whether it, and whether or not it's going to be a flat amount in which case it um, will still be reduced depending on the uh, the time that the person worked or whether it's going to be a function of your basic salary or something else. Now, if you want to see an example of a function that has a uh, where we use our expression builder, I'll take you to my benefit definition and I'll show you an example of an end of service gratuity And here you see an end of service gratuity. This one is paid in US dollars. And we are using a formula right here, an expression, using the expression builder, which has access to all different parameters, all fields and tables in the database um, in order to be able to get us the right number. Okay, so you can, there is no limit. You could use any mathematical expression, any function or operator to create an expression that will allow you to calculate what it is that you're looking for. Now, if it is based on a rate table, no problem, you can use rate tables. Since we're talking about a benefit in this case, you notice that benefits, allowances, earnings, each have their own definition screens. And the reason for that is because these things uh, typically have a bit of a unique behavior. And therefore, for example, benefits have an employee contribution and an employer contribution. Whereas a deduction, for example, will have the ability to set a deduction priority. So you can prioritize which deduction goes first uh, over another one. Now, there could also be an initial accrued amount in the case of benefits. So we define the type, the calculation method, and then we define who does this uh, apply to, which organization units does this apply to, which pay groups or which grades um, are going to be affected by this benefit. And once we have set up this structure, obviously these are not screens that your average user are going to be using. These are screens that we as a vendor uh, or partner for you will implement and configure. And after that, the system is going to behave based on those configurations. Obviously, they can be changed any time, uh, but an average user does not need to know how to do this. So if I wanted to hire somebody, I could do this right now here on the spot. All I need to do is I need to go to Quick Hire. This gives me the quick hire screen. So I can hire somebody right here on the spot. And I can do this um, also by importing a whole bunch of records if I wanted to. The example I'm going to use here is I'm going to hire Patricia James. And I will skip all the information about her address and everything. Let me just show you how quickly we can get somebody in the system. Let's say you have to pay somebody right away. And there's no time for anything else. Uh, and you don't have all the records on this person, but you're going to pay them in cash or with a check real quick. So in my case, it's going to be an accountant and the um, uh, uh, immediate supervisor will be Barbara. The person will be hired as of the 1st of February. By the way, the date format here is international date format right now. Obviously, this can be changed. In the U.S., we use the... Um, month and day uh, year format so i'm going to go in here put a salary in there this is a group that's paid monthly this pay group so we're going to use a monthly salary as we enter that and i'm going to go in here and quickly add a picture And you will notice that the system has loaded for me all these earnings, allowances, benefits, bonuses, commissions, and so on. And it has filled in the numbers. Everything is going as per policy. Why? Because I have created these policies. I've associated them with a pay group. And as a result, these people are all paid in that manner. If I wanted to eliminate something, I could have done that upon hiring. Otherwise, I can now go and do and edit this particular employee's record. 
So let me go and find Patricia James in the system. See, there's a number of Patricias. This is the record that I'm looking for. It gives me um, a very quick summary about exactly what she's getting paid and what position she's in, etc. And now I'm going to give her a username and password. We'll make that P. James. This could have been automated, but in my case, I am uh, doing it manually. Uh, this can be associated or linked with um, Active Directory if you want the system to automatically uh, give access to other systems at the same time and pick up a user ID and password from Microsoft Active Directory. Alternatively, you can do it the way I'm doing it. I'm going to go and put a little uh, sticky note on this, which says Patricia needs to submit her uh, latest uh, CPR certificate. And we'll do that right here and keep that pending and save it. Now, next time I log into the system, It's going to give me a reminder. It's going to give me a pop-up. So we have different ways of sending you alerts. We can either do it this way as a pop-up. This is a sticky note that's going to stay on the employee record until you deal with it, basically. Uh, secondly, we can give you a um, the ability to uh, uh, receive alerts simply in your email address, or you're going to get them on your self-service. So what does a self-service look like? Well, I'm going to go and log in as P. James right now. And here you see that um, Patricia um, can go and put in a uh, leave request. This is her self-service. She has the ability to do anything that is really relevant for her as an employee to be able to request from HR or from the company. She can do it online. I'm going to go in and ask a uh, day off on uh, let's take the 23rd of uh, February and the reason for that is need to visit my ex-employer for some paperwork so she has an administrative uh, leave policy that she's entitled to she has three days this could be done in hours or in days obviously um, when you're dealing with uh, uh, office staff and uh, educated employees, they will be able to use this through their self-service. Um, if you have uh, workers who, are, who may not be familiar with using uh, computers and, and smartphones, you will be able to have somebody else do that on their behalf. Okay, So there's no need for an employee to have to do everything themselves. This can be done for, by others on behalf of the employee. You, I'll just point out there are many other things here in the self-service. People can request a leave that I just did. They can sign up for training. They can request a loan. They can request travel. They can request housing. We've talked about co uh, housing um, and accommodation for employees in the mining industry. That's all uh, covered here. You'll have the ability to enroll in benefits. You will have the ability to see your shift and the schedule that you're under or um, as a supervisor review and approve uh, shift plans. You'll have the ability to review timesheets of your employees, uh, performance plans, and so on. So this is self-service that covers both the employee and the supervisor, depending on what it is that you want them to do. Let me just show you now that as an employee, this new uh, Patricia here, she can go in and put in a uh, an, an update her record. Remember that she was supposed to include her CPR certificate. So I can go in here and say I have a CPR certificate I will upload that so the HR department does not need to track and uh, follow up and uh, you know get involved with scanning documents and all that this can be done by the employees themselves the authority that is issuing that for example is the American Red Cross 
and the issue date for this is February 5th expiry is going to be let's say this is valid for five years February 28th now the point about expiry dates and issue dates is that means that we can track this, we can set up alerts, we can remind you, do whatever you need to do. The other thing I need to do right now is I want to show you that I can get such a document attached. And we'll do that right here and add. And now we have a file that um, a scan document that's been attached for the employee okay so now what did I do I requested leave as you remember so what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in as uh, Barbara who is my supervisor and I'm going to have her approve the leave request How does she find out? Well, she will get an email, but she also gets a leave request right here. And, um, and in her self-service uh, workflow activities, it shows me that there was something pending. So she can get the detail right here. If there was a document attached, I could have made it mandatory to attach a certain document, for example. In my case, I've got it like this. And I, I can see that she has uh, ample uh, balance. So the system could have rejected her request if she did not have the balance for it from the start. In addition, what I can do is I can go and look at the leave planner even before I approve this. Same thing would have applied to my employee herself. And I can see who else is going on leave. As you can tell, I've got quite a few Patricias uh, already in the system that have been requesting leave. And all of them have been requesting leave on uh, these uh, days. So I need to be careful if I'm going to approve anybody else so that we don't end up with an overlap in our department. The different types of leave can be color-coded and used uh, with different acronyms so that we can distinguish and understand what's going on exactly. Now, as a supervisor, I may be involved in other things. I may be involved in risk management so that I have to approve or assess a particular risk. Okay, I can be involved in uh, risk mitigation plans. I can, uh, uh, I can uh, like any employee, I can submit ideas or request uh, support uh, through a support ticket. If I have any issues that I need help with, I can submit ideas on how we improve our business or I can chat with some other people uh, through a chat channel that we have built in the system so that we can uh, communicate better across the company. Now, there are tons of things that we can do here. We can do the uh, performance management. We can create performance plans for our employees. Employees can initiate that process through their own initiative and everything really depends on what it is that you need from the system. I will show you another angle, which is the admin service's own self-service. Every department will have their own self-service capabilities. And they can track all the information they need and um, perform HR activities on behalf of the department, which means this can be done by a department head, but it can also be done by a timekeeper, by a secretary, by anybody who's been given specific access to particular functions that ca that should be done on behalf of the department. So the recruiting starts normally with requisitions and after that um, applicants will be sent for review and your department who issued the requisition can then see the applicants and for example handle and schedule the interviews. Okay, alternatively the um, uh, admin department in this case, admin services, can run reports and find out things that they need to know, for example, employee absences. All right, I can run a report right here that shows me employee absence in my department. And I can uh, export everything that I have to Excel. Here is my are my employee absences in my department. I don't need to come to HR to get this kind of data. Okay, so self-service is very important. It is available at the employee, at the supervisor level, and at the department or project level. All right, so let's pr proceed now and look at a few other things. Specifically, let's look at our uh, payroll because I have uh, just hired this new employee and to show you the integration, the seamless integration between all these systems, I want to show you that if I want to run payroll, I can pick up 
this uh, employee right away she's listed already in the payroll initialization because she has requested leave and that leave is going to affect her payroll so she's getting uh, a leave request listed here which I'm going to approve and add an audit record for that as a payroll officer the next step is I'm going to run an automatic timesheet now if you have timesheets that need to be imported from Excel we can do that you can import any timesheet you want from Excel. But alternatively, let me show you. Here's an example of timesheets that have been imported for another employee. This is for Jolene Jones. Here you see the records that have been imported. And in fact, we have the the um, raw data, which shows you the in and out time, and then you have the actual hours that the system has calculated based on that. Okay, and so you can find the detail record, and this can be edited by a supervisor if necessary. All supervisors will have access to the actual time records of their employees, and if you want to give them the ability to modify or edit or approve, you can do so. So. Basically, our system can work with many different timesheet formats depending on the industry that you're in that you may need to include WBS activities and so on. If not, then I can work either with uh, hours that you're importing or with actual time in and time out. There could be multiple time in and time out records for a day and the system will calculate the total number of hours worked automatically. Now, if you do not have timesheets, then the system can also produce an automatic timesheet. In the, in the uh, example of an uh, accountant, for example, you probably do not need actual timesheets. So I'm going to have my system produce the timesheet on its own. We'll go here and produce a automatic timesheet for the support staff. and we will pick our employee out of it and when we say automatic timesheet we're talking about two things one is the time records the actual hours that we're going to be using but we're also applying it directly to the payroll and compensation policy so that we can see how much this person really is going to get paid okay so what you're looking at here is An employee who normally is getting paid. Let's take a look. She's supposed to get paid 160 hours, but in our case, there were eight unpaid hours, and that makes it uh, uh, work hours of 152. Why? Because she took that administrative leave off, which is an unpaid pay policy, uh, leave policy, and therefore she's getting out of 160 only 152. And a number of her other earnings have been adjusted as a result, too. Uh, we notice that she's getting a lab work differential, which in the case of an accountant doesn't make much sense. Uh, the reason that's there is because I had assigned this to um, her pay group and it is on her uh, profile. If she doesn't need to get one, we should have modified this from the start. This shouldn't have been there in the beginning, from the beginning, but I can still make an exception. Let's say maybe this is a unique exception this month only th that I'm removing this. Okay, so you can modify things on the spot right now or you can uh, modify them permanently on the employee compensation plan. In my case, I'm making some modifications on the spot. I am, uh, for example, taking out the house rent allowance. I'm going to modify the family allowance, make that 500 or 250 only. And I'm going to take out the uh, car allowance also. Basically, all I'm showing you is that you have the ability to modify anything you want here. Uh, this dependent allowance could be, for whatever reason, paid on the total regular work hours instead of the actual work hours. It doesn't matter. It all depends on how you want it to be done. Okay. Timesheet details are here. I did not import any time records for her. Remember, the system has produced her, its own records based on the scheduled hours. And it just highlights for me that there was an unpaid leave, administrative leave right here. 
Labor distribution, the, the uh, employee was hired in the accounts payable, so all of her costs is automatically assigned to accounts payable unless you have set up um, rules to split the cost and distribute it over multiple departments, projects, cost centers, whatever you want it to be. And that could be done based on timesheets. It can be done based on a percentage, a fixed split that you set up from the start. Okay. Now, assuming that everything is good, because we have the chance now to modify anything that we want, uh, assuming everything is correct, then we're going to proceed with our trial payroll. Prior to this, you could have imported an Excel sheet. Um, let me just go back and show you. With exceptions. Okay, right here, import exceptions will allow me to import an Excel sheet with any number of exceptions, deductions, penalties, allowances that are unique every every pay period, that are unique to this particular pay period. For a thousand employees, you could import a single Excel sheet. Same thing for 20,000 employees if you wanted to. There's no, um, uh, there's nothing stopping you from doing all this uh, through an import from Excel. It is a smart import, import tool which will make sure that any data uh, that is not recognized where the codes seem to be wrong or the pay periods are not recognized something else, it will automatically reject that. Okay, so it, and it will tell you what was wrong with your import so that you can correct those errors. Now we're going to run the trial payroll. We're going to run it for the uh, support staff, which is the group in which I hired that new employee. And we will produce a trial pay. Now once you've produced a trial pay, the system is going to give you a um, automatic variance report that shows you if there are any large variances between the current pay period and the last pay period, which is definitely the case in my case, so you notice that it's highlighting. And I c it can force me to put in the username and password for me to be able to proceed. Now let me go and take a look at uh, Patricia and look at her uh, trial pay record. In fact, this is going to give me her pay stub and it shows me uh, what exactly she's going to get paid. All right. Now, if everything is correct, I could proceed. Obviously, what you would be doing normally is you're going to be running your reports. You're going to be running all kinds of audit reports to make sure that nothing is uh, is uh, uh, going wrong here, that you didn't miss any critical information or uploaded the wrong data for some employees. So in order to do that, you're going to go in here and run payroll reports. You have tons of payroll registers that we can run. There's really almost no limit. There are more than 700 reports in the system, more than you'll ever need. All of these reports, by the way, come with their own uh, parameters and context-specific filters. So if I go and say I want to pay a uh, payroll detail report, for example, then we can say I want to run the payroll detail report for the support staff for this particular pay period. And I can choose other report parameters or I can just go and say produce this generated for the trial payroll for the February 2017 pay period for support staff. And once we have that data, we can go and export this to Excel and verify everything that we need to know as usual. Okay, this can all be exported to Excel with a click of one button only. Now... <clears throat> I will just point out a few things on the international capabilities. Apart from the fact that I just mentioned earlier, everything is multi-currency. You set up your rules, you choose your countries, and so on. Uh, there's another general setting right here, which allows me to choose my employment country, my weekends, my date format, and so on. There are many other things that we can set up uh, as we need them. Now, the way this works in payroll, you will have the ability to not only run the trial payroll, but also to run a trial GL run that will give you the GL transactions that go to your GL um, system and allow you to verify if all the cost is being allocated to the, right cost, to the correct cost centers and so on. We can also provide you with a trial direct bank deposit file. Once everything is correct, we will move on to final payroll. 
and that means that we can uh, we are going to update the tables permanently we will have GL transaction processing done we um, print paychecks or direct bank deposit files and so on and then we produce the GL transaction posting uh, to the external GL system now there are four types of payroll in uh, interact you have normal payroll cycle which happens typically once a month if your if your regular pay is done monthly we have off cycle payroll which handles the ability to uh, make payments anytime during the month that can't wait till the end of the month we have retroactive payroll which supports making changes effective in the past which will have an impact on the current pay period and the pay periods that follow the, ch the effective date of the change and you have end of service payroll which handles the final payroll process in the case of a uh, employee that leaves the company so these are four pay cycles which are separate but at the same time uh, seamlessly integrated so it's a separate process you run if you have to do an off-cycle payroll uh, because you you need to uh, do some uh, uh, you know unique calculations but everything is integrated within one single payroll engine okay now once you have produced the final payroll you produce your paychecks employees will be able to view this stuff online through their self-service and you move on to the next pay period now I'll just point out a few other things assets are critical you can define any number of assets you want in the system and um, track equipment and laptops cell phones cars whatever you issue to your employees under scheduling we have the ability to define equipment so that could include buses for example to take the employees to the location where they need to go if you have to schedule uh, 400 people to be at a particular site on a particular day you need to make sure that you also apart from everything else have the transportation available to get them there and so that's one of the things that needs to be scheduled if you only have three buses you cannot get 400 people on site most likely at the same time um, our system allows you to also define housing and track which employees are staying in which housing and uh, make sure that there's clear records of everything you have health and safety to uh, identify uh, injuries illnesses that occurred on the job and to do the correct reporting for that for your government and regulatory requirements you have a very sophisticated risk management system that allows me to define the sources of risks the consequences the impact of risk and then uh, define risk committees and risk officers involved in that process and as a result you'll be able to have assessment of risk create risk uh, uh, business impact matrix matrixes so that it'll tell you for example here the system is giving me the different options and um, evaluating the different risks that we are uh, subject subject to and telling me which ones have the highest consequence and the, the uh, highest probability that we need to focus on the system is very comprehensive very flexible and you really decide the modules that you want to deploy the reporting is across all the different modules the alerts are across all modules the workflow works across all the modules and you choose and pick and choose really which modules need to be deployed first okay everything is integrated everything works in the same manner and as I said we have very strong time attendance even access control that can restrict access to certain areas uh, through doors or if need be through turnstiles and gates um, using the time uh, clock system that we have here which will allow me to identify a user by their fingerprint or their proximity card that they're using and then the system will be able to uh, kick into gear from there so this is a quick idea of how this works maybe one other uh, thing to show you is that the system is very strong with bulk um, transactions as we said before and therefore an example of that would be an organization mass transfer mass employee organization transfer all it takes to do that is to go in here and say I want to do a new transfer and this will be effective as of March uh, 1st and we are going to transfer people from let's say from admin services we have a whole bunch of accountants in there and we're going to transfer all of these people it could have been I can click all of them at once but maybe I just need to uh, select a number of them and I want to transfer them to another department accounts receivable okay so all I need to do is save this 
Subsequent to that, I'm going to approve the uh, transfer. And then ultimately, I'm going to post it. Okay, now this transfer has been posted. These people have been moved. And as of um, the 1st of March, they will be showing on the list right here. Okay, but well, this is a, a change made effective in the future, so they're still not showing in this group at this moment. Now, second thing, I have a mass update option, which allows me to do all kinds of changes to my employee groups without having to do them one by one. So these are across the board changes that we can do in the system. And that includes assignment of new policies, revoking of policies, increasing of existing policies. And we're talking about compensation and leave policies here typically, but also deactivating or, or activating and doing all kinds of other things. An example, if you wanted to give a, uh, a new leave policy to a group of employees, let's say, all the support staff that are female uh, should be given. Let's do a search and see how many we find, first of all. Okay, we've got seven only. Now, those seven people, I'm going to check all of them except this one. And I'm going to assign to them a new uh, family leave policy. And the starting balance for that policy will be two days. It's going to be effective as of March 1st. And that's it. So this is a way to assign a new policy. The same thing could have been done, a new allowance, a new benefit, or uh, an increase of an existing allowance, and say that we want to increase their family allowance by 5% effective March or April 1st. You do it whichever way you want to. Notice that in Interact, an employee can hold more than one job. You can have primary job, secondary job, and more than that, and therefore, that means that that employee could be paid at different pay rates depending on the job that they were working based on the timesheets that we got. Another thing to point out is that the change uh, that I just uh, showed you when I did the organization um, employee mass transfer or mass employee transfer, this was done um, through a form, but it, the transfers actually can happen automatically based on the timesheets. If you have employees clocking in in different projects, different locations, instead of having HR um, run after the, the facts and uh, enter things uh, retroactively, you could have the system automatically reassign them based on the time uh, clocks that, that are reporting that these people have shown up for work in a different location. Maybe the supervisor tells them on the spot, you go there, you go there. And if that's done, then in that case, the system will, uh, will understand that these people have moved and will uh, make the uh, uh, the required changes and allocate the cost correctly. I will show you one last item, which is an import file that allows me to import uh, employees. Here, for example, you have a set of employees that can be imported with one click. And like this, you can have a 1,000 employees or 200 employees that you get from an Excel sheet and you import them in one click. Uh, in the system and the importing capabilities are very extensive and interact again all of this is designed to handle organizations that have sophisticated needs that have high volumes that need to be able to deal with um, transactions quickly and under my import capabilities here you can see that I can import pretty much anything I need in the system among those things are employee demographics and employee details so right here I can choose the uh, settings. I can. These are configurable import tools, which means that the format in which we are feeding this data into the system is configurable based on what it is that you have and that is relevant for your business. Okay, so if I don't need to have uh, job levels and work locations, for example, for employee data, then you don't need to import that. But we do need to have, in any case, an employee ID. We need their first name and family name and we need to have the date of birth, etc., so that we have uh, complete records. 
but we do need to have an employee ID, for example, we need to have their name, we need to have um, gender and marital status. If that is something you, you require, then you can import that um, with one click, really. It's all a matter of choosing upload and then importing it. And the system will tell you how many records have been inserted, how many have been updated, how many have been rejected, and will tell you why they have been rejected. And in this manner, we can import pretty much any data that you need in the system and quickly convert your data from any ex existing system to a um, to the new Interact HRMS. Interact HRMS is a global HRMS solution, 85 different modules. You pick and choose the ones that you require, and it is um, designed to be simple to use. In fact, even though we've shown you many things in a very short period of time, um, a, a typical user will only be focused on a number of screens uh, that they work in work on day in day out and it'll be very intuitive and the beauty about the system is because everything is developed by us it's all developed in the same manner it's all developed with the same logic and intuitive uh, flow so that once you be become familiar with some of these modules you will quickly learn how to work all the other modules too we have not touched on talent management we have not touched on many other aspects of the product right now but it should be clear that Everything has the same look and feel, and there is no need to log in and log out to do all kinds of different things unless you are playing different roles. Okay? If there are any other questions, we'll be happy to help you with them and um, show you that Interact HRMS can be an ideal solution for mining organizations with sophisticated payroll and time attendance requirements. Thank you for your time.